Okay, before we go on, let's stop and talk about what we already know. We understand that there's water underneath the ground. That's groundwater. We also know that, that groundwater can come up to the surface naturally, and that's what we call a spring. Here are the key concepts and vocabulary that you're going to get that are new today to this presentation. You can copy these questions now and you can answer them as we go through the presentation or you can just take scratch notes and at the end I will show you this slide again and you can kind of go through it and say, okay, do I have that information in my notes? Because that's what you're going to be assessed on on the quiz tomorrow. First of all, let's talk about the temperatures of springs. What temperature should spring water be? Spring water is typically cold because it's coming from under the ground where there's no sunlight. And we know that it's sunlight that drives temperature. So if you don't have any sunlight, that means you're going to be cold. If you've ever been in a cave, you know it's chilly underground. So spring water is typically cold water. So here we're looking at a spring. Remember that a spring is a place where water comes up naturally out of the ground. You can see water is coming out of this thing and it's flowing this way. Well, there's no inlet. So where's the water come from? The water comes from way up high in those mountains. All that snow melts and it seeps into the rock and goes down into the ground. Well, we're at a lower elevation here, so this is where the water pops back up out of the ground and you have what's called a spring. The difference with this spring water is that it's 110 degrees. This water isn't cold water which remember typically water coming out of the ground is cold because there's no sunlight down there and the water gets cold. However, this is what's called a hot spring where the water comes out of the ground and it is not cold. Well, the reason for that can be a couple of things. It can be friction due to the earth's plates rubbing together that makes the groundwater hot. Or it could be a place where we've had a leftover volcano and there's still some heat down under the ground. And as the water goes into the ground, it, it touches that hot rock left over from the last volcanic eruption. And that way when it pops back up, it becomes hot water. So hence, this is a hot spring, which is any type of spring, place where water is coming out of the ground, and the water is not cold. So here I am at Grover Hot Springs State Park in California. Now, just as a reminder, a spring is some place where water comes to the ground naturally. A hot spring is some place where it comes to the ground after it has been heated. Generally, the heat source comes from one of two factors. Either you're close to a volcano where the heat from the volcano heats the groundwater, or you're someplace where you've got a fault and you have some rather large mountains being formed. A fault is where two sections of the Earth's crust are rubbing back and forth. And that rubbing back and forth causes some friction, generates heat, and makes the water hot. Now, if we turn around and we look, the location I'm standing in right here, there's a significant fault that runs right through here. This land over here and this land over here is rubbing up against each other. And that friction generates a lot of heat because we're talking about a lot of rock, a lot of mass that is just grinding back and forth up against each other. And that makes the ground hot. So any water in the ground will come out of the ground hot. And here's one of the places where it comes out of the ground. This is a hot spring. Doesn't look very impressive. And it's hard to tell the temperature from a video. But what they do here in Grover Springs State Park is they collect this hot water. And you'll see it comes running down here. Comes out this side. I wish I had a thermometer, but where you could see some steam, but that is, that's about too hot to touch. You can just barely touch it. It's not quite boiling, but it's not comfortable. Now if you notice, the water runs downhill. And down here at Grover Hot Springs State Park, they collect it and they made it into a rather large natural hot tub swimming pool. Now you might be asking yourself, oh, why does the water look so gross? Why does, it look, why does this look so brown and nasty and, and ugly? Well, remember that water coming up out of the ground brings a certain amount of minerals up with it. And hot spring water is going to bring up more minerals than cold spring water because 
hot spring or hot water dissolves more stuff and you can see it and that's what this these browns and these oranges are that's coating these rocks these are minerals that the hot spring brought up with it and then once it starts to cool on the surface it starts to drop and coat everything in those minerals generally these oranges and reddish ones are iron based minerals which are pretty typical in most hot springs they dissolve easily in water and then they get deposited rather easily what i'm actually standing on here this big mound is actually a big pile of thousands of years of all of those minerals just being stacked up So the two heat sources for hot springs that were described, one, volcanoes. It didn't have to be an active volcano. It can be just a dead volcano that still has some hot rock in the ground. Or friction from mountain building or tectonic plates. Those are the two things that can make the ground hot enough to make the water in the ground hot. Now, so let's define what a hot spring is, and there is no universally accepted definition of what makes a hot spring versus a cold spring. For the purposes of our discussion in this class, we're going to say the hot spring is any place where the spring water is not cold, because we would expect cold water to come up out of the ground. So if it's not what we would consider to be cold, we're going to call that a hot spring. So how hot do they get? Well, Hot springs can be the temperature of a hot tub. You know, you can see both of these, 94.8, 101.9. These are both uh, hot springs that were turned into basically naturally heated swimming pools or natural hot tubs. Those are about the temperatures that, that you would find comfortable in a sauna or a hot tub. But hot springs can also get much, much hotter than that. Hot springs can get so hot that they become dangerous. 100 degrees Celsius. That's boiling. Boiling water will kill you. It would cook you. And you can see this hot spring here has a sign on it that says no trespassing. Hey, don't get close to this. Don't walk near this hot spring. It's too dangerous. You'll see these signs all around hot springs if the water is too hot and especially if the ground is too unstable because they don't want you to fall in and burn yourself. Here's an example of a hot spring that is actually a boiling spring. <coughs> you can see the water is actually boiling. You wouldn't want to get into that hot spring. It's hot enough that it will cook you. Sometimes hot springs are so hot that the water itself actually never makes it to the surface. It basically just comes out of the ground as steam well so it's still a hot spring because it's still a place where water is coming to the surface in this case it's just steam we call these steam vents but they are classified as hot springs because it's still water coming to the surface naturally some of these hot springs like i said are so hot they could kill you they would cook you and actually some hot springs have been used for cooking this is in Japan, and you can see the sign there where they say this spring was used for cooking food. And what they did in the days before you had, you know, electricity and gas ovens and things, maybe you had to burn wood uh, to boil water to cook your food. Well, if you've got this naturally boiling water, you just take a long stick, suspend something in a basket, and it's like you're putting something in a pot of boiling water. It will cook whatever you put in there. Now, hot springs can't be so dangerous, and they have killed people. Yellowstone National Park, a lot of hot springs that are boiling, and every now and again, somebody gets too close and they fall in. And this was just a few years ago that a guy slipped in the hot springs and he was killed. So, to answer that question, how hot are hot springs? We're going to say that basically they are, they can be just from warm up to boiling. So it doesn't have to be boiling hot to be a hot spring. It can be just warm. It can be all the way up to boiling. Here's a, another type of hot spring 
I just want to show you these. These are what are called mud pots. You can see there's water in the ground here, and it's coming to the surface, it's bubbling up to the surface hot. But so much of the water evaporates, or there's not enough water in the ground, that it basically makes mud as opposed to just like a puddle of water. Once again, these are called mud pots. So where are these hot springs found? Well, hot springs aren't necessarily rare. They are found on all continents, including Antarctica. Now this is obviously not my picture. I have not been to Antarctica, but right along the coast in Antarctica, they, they do have some hot springs very close to the surface and tourists will go there and you see they get the shovels and they dig down into the soil and they let some of the water collect and they have a hot spring even in Antarctica. Now, in our country, we do have hot springs. Look at this map. You'll see that most of the hot springs in the United States are located in the west. You would say this is the west. Are there hot springs in the east? Yes, not nearly as many, but there are hot springs all over our country, but we wanna say where they found primarily in the west now every state has a natural spring like natural springs are all over the place if you look at this map not every state has a hot spring even though there's a lot of hot springs not every state has one well how many are there about uh, 1700 or so so we're not going to say that these things are especially rare but they're not overly common either you know there are springs as we saw in the previous presentation there, there were sandy springs there was north springs there's springs all over the place whether they're still there or not there are lots of natural springs around there aren't nearly as many hot springs and the hot springs that we do have in this country are primarily found in the western part of the country there are actually six towns in this country that are named hot springs because when somebody got there at some point in time, they noticed that there was a spring, but it was hot water. So they named that location Hot Springs. See, one in California, one in Montana, South Dakota, Arkansas, North Carolina, and Virginia. I've actually been to uh, three of those six. So here I am in central Arkansas. As you see, I'm at Hot Springs National Park, which is in the town of Hot Springs, Arkansas. And as you can imagine, there are a lot of hot springs here. And a long time ago, in the 1800s, the federal government recognized the value of these hot springs, especially in the day and age when hot water and indoor plumbing wasn't very common. So this area was set aside and it was protected for everyone and the general public to use. The question is, why do that? What do you use this for? So think about the day and age before we had hot water heaters and indoor plumbing. How would you get hot water? You have to burn coal, you have to burn wood, and boil a pot of water, and that's how you would get hot water. Well, here in Hot Springs, Arkansas, you had free hot water coming out of the ground. So what was done was all of the hot springs were capped and you build what was called a public bath, which is basically just a big public bathroom with free hot water. And the thought was that people could come here and use the free hot water. And the thought at the time was that it was good for you. And it, it kind of makes sense because you think about who doesn't feel good after soaking in a hot tub. So all up and down this street, all of the hot springs were capped and these big fancy buildings were built over them and this is called Bathhouse Row where people would come and sit in the hot water and feel better because of it. Here's what the inside of the bathhouses look like. It looks fairly modern. It looks like a bunch of indoor hot tubs and swimming pools, which is what it is. 
but the difference being that these are fed by natural hot springs. The water come up out of the ground is naturally hot. Many towns that had hot springs, and this is hot springs, Montana, as opposed to hot springs, Arkansas, became resort towns where people went to soak in the natural hot water. Because you think even, you know, 100 years ago, certainly 150 years ago, it was expensive to take a hot bath and time consuming. You had to boil a bunch of water for that. You had to burn coal or burn wood and then put the water in something, it, it wasn't as easy as just turning a faucet. Well, if you had a place where you had hot water coming on the ground naturally, it was that easy. So a lot of these hot spring locations were turned into resorts where it was very much a novelty at the time that people could come and they could take a hot bath or they could swim in what we now, what we would now call a heated swimming pool, which was unheard of 100, 150 years ago, unless the hot water was someplace that you could get it for free, like a hot spring. Now, the waters were also thought to have healing properties. And this goes back to the cold spring water as well, that this groundwater's got minerals in it. And people whose diets weren't as good would maybe drink the hot spring water and they'd get, be like taking their vitamins every morning. It also helped up to clear up things like skin diseases, rashes, uh, even something as simple as thinking like, you know, uh, bad scalp, that the hot spring water and the minerals in it would help to clear things like that up in a day and age where not everybody always had access to hot water and subsequently didn't take a bath every day. This is in Hot Springs, Arkansas, where they had a lot of hot springs and they had all kinds of hot spring water that they actually built physical therapy and rehabilitation centers all over this town. Because any of you that are athletes or have had any kind of orthopedic injury and you do kind of retab in, in, the, in the hot tub, you know it works. It's good for you and it's very effective. Well, in the days before indoor plumbing and the days before everybody had a hot water heater, you would come here to do your therapy and get treatment using the hot water. Matter of fact, the U.S. government built a huge hospital there for soldiers to recuperate from their injuries. One of the largest Veterans Administration hospitals in the country was there, going back to the time of even the Civil War, where soldiers who got injured in battle were sent here to do therapy in the hot water, and they healed better, and they felt better after doing it. Ironically, this is also the start of spring training for professional baseball. In the late 1800s, famous baseball player came there. He came to the Army Navy Hospital because he'd heard about the, the treatments they were doing for wounded soldiers and he had a bad pitching arm. And he came and, and took in the waters, that's what they called it at the time, and his arm loosened up, felt better. He spent a week or two there, and then he was ready for the season. Well, word got around that, hey, that was you know, that was beneficial for a player getting ready for the next season. And this was actually the first place that baseball teams started coming to spring training because they would start training. Athletes would get sore, they would get injured, and they would be able to soak in the waters and feel better and be rejuvenated for the upcoming season. Now, nowadays, no baseball teams go there because everybody has a hot water heater in the house. You don't have to go there for that purpose. Every Even Centennial High School, we have a hot water bath tub, a, a therapy tub. We have two of them in our training room downstairs. So you don't have to go to Hot Springs, Arkansas for this anymore. But this is where and why spring training baseball got its start. So do we have hot springs in Georgia? Answer is yes, we've got two. One's called Warm Springs. It's a little town kind of halfway to Columbus, and the other is Radium String Springs down near Albany. Of the two, Warm Springs is a lot more famous because President Roosevelt, who had polio, came here to receive treatment for his muscles because his legs were decimated by the polio. He was basically in a wheelchair. And on the Warm Springs here in Georgia, they built a hospital, a therapy center for people who had polio and other physical uh, disabilities. 
And to this day, the, the hospital is still there and it still treats patients. So it's not a public hot spring, but we do have a hot spring here in Georgia called Warm Springs. Not especially hot, but we do have some here in Georgia. Now, are hot springs good for you? And does the water have healing powers? The answer there is yes and no. This is kind of like drinking the spring water. Uh, are hot springs good for you? Well, don't you feel good after sitting in a hot tub? Generally, yes. So in that sense, yeah, hot, uh, hot springs are good for the body. You feel better. Does the water have healing powers? Uh, if you lack vitamins and minerals in your diet, then yes, that water would be better for you, be beneficial to you. Most of us in this day and age, we don't have to have that mineral water um, for, the, for the minerals that our body needs. We get it from our diets. But that does bring up a good discussion about hot springs and their minerals. So hot springs have minerals in the water, like all springs do. What happens is the water underground gets hot, and as the as the water comes to the surface, it dissolves some of the ground that it's in. So when the water comes up, it brings the minerals from the ground with it. And that's how all springs have a mineral content. Hot springs tend to have more mineral content because hot water dissolves stuff better than cold water. You can see this in this picture. These are three hot, three different hot springs in Japan, all the same day, close to the same location, but notice they all have distinctly different colors. And it wasn't that they dyed this water, it's just the water is coming up through slightly different ground and the water dissolves a different amount of minerals and brings them to the surface. So we, we have a, a green, a blue, and a red set of minerals and the three different hot springs have different colors because of the different minerals that are being brought to the surface in those individual locations. You can see it here, this white crustiness that you'll see on the rocks around a hot spring is very typical of the minerals that a hot spring will bring to the surface. Here was a place where the hot spring water was coming out of the walls of a canyon and it looked like it had all this salt on it. And it kind of is, it is technically, scientifically, chemically speaking, a salt. But these are minerals that were in the water and when the water came out of the rock, it coated the rock with minerals. You can see it on this nice dark black rock in Iceland. Rock is volcanic, it's basaltic, it's very dark black, and yet you can see this white stuff is the minerals that are being dissolved in the hot spring water. Now, going back to Hot Springs National Park, people in Hot Springs National Park will collect the water to drink. It's like any other spring water. You know, people like the taste of it. It's free, you can get it out of the ground, especially because it's a national park. They have public fountains all over the place. And almost every single one of them, I saw people filling up their water jugs. Here's what the fountain looks like. And here you can see people just filling up their water container. But if you notice the sign here, the sign that was stuck right here to my water fountain has kind of a crusty film on it because when you draining out the water, some of it splashes and kind of gets around and the water, even though it evaporates, it leaves the minerals behind. So that's what this film is here on this sign. It's a layer or a crust of the minerals that was left behind. Interesting story here. Here's two signs that were both applied, both built at the same time. And I asked the park ranger this, they're both built uh, in 2000, and you can see the chemical analysis is 1999. They're done the same year. The difference here is one of these is a cold water spring. This one over here is cold. This one over here is a hot water spring. Notice that the cold water spring sign 
looks clear. You can still see it. But the hot water sink, the hot water spring sign seems to be coated in a bunch of film, which it is. This shows you that hot spring water has a lot more minerals in it than cold spring water. Here you can see, uh, here's a fountain on a hot spring in Iceland. You can just see all of the minerals that have coated the fountain over time because hot springs tend to hold a lot of minerals. So what we've got back there is a hot spring. We've got hot water coming up out of the ground and hot water tends to bring a lot of minerals with it. But when the water gets to the surface, the water cools down and the minerals get deposited and you typically wind up with large piles of minerals around hot springs especially and you can see this right here as I walk down the hill that over time these minerals have kind of piled up and they've made what appears to be almost like a little miniature volcano now the water isn't coming out of the top of this hot spring anymore because thousands of years later this hot spring doesn't have quite as much water coming up out of the ground so this mineral deposit likely isn't getting any larger but this is a good example of how minerals get brought to the surface and then dropped by hot springs here's another good example of a pile of minerals that can develop when hot spring water comes to the surface and starts dropping its minerals. This is at Mammoth Hot Springs in Yellowstone National Park and it got the word mammoth because it is incredibly, incredibly large. This pile of minerals is basically the size of a small hill or a mountain. With some hot springs, you can just see the piles of minerals piling up over time. Look at this little, just little tiny little trickle of water coming out here. But it's got so much minerals in it that it's built up this huge pile, this huge chunk of rock-like minerals over about, I think, 80 years. Here I am in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California and I'm standing in front of Travertine Hot Springs. Recall that a spring is any place that water comes to the ground naturally, but a hot spring is where the water comes to the surface hot. These are typically found in the western part of the U.S. for two reasons. One, there's more volcanoes here which can make the ground hot, and two, all of the friction when these tall mountains get built, all of that rock being pushed up creates a lot of friction which can also make the ground hot. Now, when any kind of water comes to the surface, it carries minerals with it. Hot water dissolves more minerals than cold water. And that's why you can see a lot more colors typically in a hot spring than you do in a cold spring. And this big mound here in front of you, all that is is a pile of minerals that have built up over probably thousands of years. As a matter of fact, if you walk this way, the hot spring used to be back there. And over time, the pile has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger to where now the, the spigot or the end of the hot spring is out here. So what other countries in the world are known to have lots of hot springs? Obviously in the United States, we have about 1700. We got a lot of hot springs in our country. You see some countries that I have circled on here. Uh, Canada, close to the United States, a lot of mountains uh, and volcanoes. Canada, certainly hot springs. Central America, Costa Rica is known to have a lot of hot springs. Chile in South America. One that we're gonna study extensively in this course is Iceland. Iceland has a lot of hot springs. I showed you Japan, New Zealand. Another one that we're going to look at next week is, in Europe, Hungary. 
So these are some of the countries that are known for having hot springs or have notable hot springs. So at this time, we're going to review the key concepts in the vocabulary before you take the quiz tomorrow. So now, look at these questions. Can you answer these questions based on what you have written in your notes so that you'll be ready for the quiz? When you're done, take a picture of your notes, upload them to Teams so you can get credit for your daily assignment for the day.